Tonight we're starting a new sermon series, and it's going to be about, the next three weeks are going to be about the characteristics of God, and how God's characteristics define what our identity is in. Uh, And so you'll see a thread over the next couple weeks, so I'm kicking this off tonight, and then Steve Frizzell, our executive pastor, is preaching the next two weeks, Um, and so you'll get to hear from him. Um, Anyone in the room ever get scared when thinking about the future? Nah. Who said nah? Uh, For some of us, for some of us, that might just mean as simple as thinking about tomorrow or in thinking about the first day of school that's coming. Others, it might be you get really scared when thinking about the distant future. That's really what you get scared about. What's to come in six months to a year. Now, what is it about the future that makes you scared? For me, it's a fear of the unknown. Uh, The Enneagram One in me doesn't like not knowing what's coming and not being in control. When I am thinking in the flesh, when I am thinking just as Maria Givens, I feel so much uncertainty uh, and I ask a lot of what if questions. However, When I think about the future in the spirit, and when I think about the future uh, in my identity in Jesus, I feel peaceful. And I feel peaceful because of God's faithfulness. The uncertainty I feel about life, the questions I have about the future, the things that I go what if about, they don't affect God's faithfulness. Because... God's faithfulness is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing I do, nothing I feel, nothing even someone does to me will change that. His faithfulness is the same. The faithfulness of God means that God is unchanging in his nature. Uh, He's true to his word. He has promised salvation to his people and will keep his promises forever. Nothing in heaven or on earth can prevent God from accomplishing all that he has promised his people through Jesus. This reliability, this this faithfulness of God should be a great source of comfort and strength for God's people as they repeatedly fail and go on trials and suffering. But even in all of that, we should find comfort because of God's faithfulness. In my life, there have been a few times when I have really questioned if God was going to provide. There's a lot of stories. Um, But when I was in high school, so when I was y'all's age, I wasn't sure what the next step after graduation was for me. People were telling me that I had to go to college, that that was the thing that I had to do after graduation. It's what everyone in my family did. But I wasn't a great student. Now, I tried, okay? It wasn't for lack of trying. But, like, school just wasn't my thing. Um, And when thinking about college, the the large college, big classes, lots of parties, just wasn't ever going to be my jam. Uh, I continued to pray to God for guidance. um, And as I continued to follow him day after day, He led me to a small college that was exactly what I needed. On my own, I never would have landed at Samford. Uh, Samford is a private Christian college in the middle of Alabama. I grew up on the East Coast in Virginia. Never would I have found this school on my own. It's 800 miles from my parents' house, and I didn't know anybody. But God constantly showed me that he had a plan. He, his faithfulness in my life shined bright as I found my community in college and as I experienced that life of a college student. Um, and it is very evident that that is what I was supposed to do. And his faithfulness shined through every step of the way. Uh, when I turned 30, uh, I came to the conclusion, now some of you might be going, Maria, there's no way you're older than 30. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, When I turned 30, I came to the conclusion that I was going to be single forever. 
I like hit that mark. If you're about to turn 30 in the room or if you have hit 30, like you're supposed to have your whole life together. And I had made the decision that I was gonna be single forever. And I was actually okay with that. I had models in my sisters of what a single adult woman looked like. And so I was good. Having a husband was no longer on my life bingo card. I just made a whole new bingo card about life and having a husband was not on it. Then, a few years later, a friend of mine introduced me to this guy. He loved Jesus. We got along. We had very similar personalities and humor. But I was like, he's not looking for somebody. I'm not looking for somebody. So like, ah, toss him to the side. Legit. I just kind of pitched him to the side. Uh, But sometimes God has a really funny sense of humor. Uh, When we say, nah, nah, I'm good. I don't need that. Uh, he has different plans for our lives. And it's about everything, not just like relationships. Uh, But I was in a season where my life was very much focused on God and doing what he had had called for me to do for his kingdom. Uh, I was like blinders on, doing everything along the way to do what he had called for my life in that season. And it became very evident very quickly when talking with Harrison that he was a part of that life. But I had already told myself that I didn't need that. And here's the beautiful thing is we push each other to follow Jesus every day and we rest in the comfort of God's faithfulness on our lives and as a family. And that was never something that I even asked for, but God was faithful in what my life looks like today. In my life, um, God's faithfulness is also very abundant uh, in my job here at Bentry. Um, It is only because of his truth and his nature and his promises that I've been able to get through the last six years being here at Bentry. It's been a wild story with a lot of ups and downs just being on staff and being a member here at Bentry. But the reliability of God's faithfulness and love has gotten me through all of it. Um, At the beginning of July, uh, some of you have probably heard, hopefully all of you, and this is not like a shock to you, um, but our high school pastor, Colin, decided to step down from his position here at Bentry. Um, He made the choice that he needed to step away from this job to focus 100% on his wife and his kids. And I'll be really honest with you, it was really difficult for me personally. I want what is best for my friend, Colin, Uh, And I want what he needs to do for himself to be the priority. Uh, But it meant we had to start looking for a new high school pastor here at Bentry. Um, I spent a lot of time grieving what I thought the future was going to look like here with HSM. Um, And you can grieve the future. You can grieve things that you thought you had planned. Maybe you have this dream of being a D1 athlete, but you're only five foot tall and can't play football. You can grieve the loss of that dream. I had dreams for what I thought HSM was going to be. And so I had to grieve a lot of that. But here's the thing. God wasn't surprised by any of that. He has a plan for HSM. uh, And I'm excited that he allows you and me and your small group leaders to be a part of that plan. Um, God was faithful in the past when we needed HSM leader pastors, and he will continue to be faithful in filling that role. I can stand here confident with my hands open, ready for whatever the next part of that journey is for us here at HSM, because God is faithful. Sometimes it's hard to fathom the promises that God has for us because of what's happened to us, or because of choices that we've made. We think that we don't deserve God's faithfulness, um, that we don't, we don't need it, we don't, he's never gonna give it to us. We don't think God will be faithful. We don't think, again, we will deserve his faithfulness. But I'm here to tell you that you're incorrect. The faithfulness of God means that God is unchanging in his nature. He is true to his word, He has promised salvation to his people and will keep his promises forever. Nothing, and I mean nothing, in heaven or on earth can prevent God 
from accomplishing all that he has promised his people through Jesus. Now, if a few of my personal experiences about God's faithfulness uh, don't convince you enough, uh, I have a couple examples from scripture as well that show us God's faithfulness. Um, So what's going to pop up on the screen are basically just the biblical references that I talk through. Um, So I'm not going to have you like flip all over the place because that would be a lot of flipping. Um, In Genesis 12, uh, God calls Abram to himself and gives him incredible promises about acquiring land, about having innumerable descendants and blessing the world. One of the principal promises, having a son, was really hard to fathom for Abram because of how old he was. It took then 25 years, and God finally grants his promise to what is then Abraham in Genesis 21. God was faithful. God reveals to Moses that he is a faithful generation after generation in Exodus 34, 6. He would continue to show faithfulness uh, to the descendants of Jacob, by eventually bringing them out of Egypt into the land that he had promised Abraham. So yet again, God is faithful. When God promises David that he would build his house and give him an everlasting ruler, David declares in 2 Samuel 7, 28, that God's words are true, reliable, and faithful. Nehemiah recounts God's faithfulness to Israel during the Exodus, He recounts God's faithfulness in the wilderness, uh, throughout the conquest, in the time of the judges, through captivity, and all the way to the return of the land, despite their unfaithfulness during each period. And you can see all of that in Nehemiah chapter 9. Despite Israel's perpetual lack of faithfulness, of them choosing to do things that, like, are not godly, uh, God still accomplished salvation and in his people of Jerusalem and would one day call them the faithful city. And you can see that in Zechariah 8, 3. Psalm 36, 5 tells us that God's faithfulness reaches to the skies. God is faithful from morning to night, according to Psalm 92, 2. And when he comes to judge the earth, it will be in righteousness and faithfulness, according to Psalm 96, 13. God's faithfulness is mostly clearly revealed in Jesus Christ. We know that there are prophecies that are made and Jesus fulfills them because God is faithful. And his character is of ultimate reliability, personifies what it means to be faithful. Even to the point where faithful becomes the names of Jesus. So, He is a faithful witness. He's the faithful one. He is the faithful and true witness. He is the one called faithful and true. Because of the reliability of the work of Christ for his people, 2 Corinthians 1.20 tells us that all the promises of God to his children find their yes in him. So all the promises of God to his children find their yes in him. God's faithfulness can help a believer overcome temptation, according to 1 Corinthians 1.9, and suffering, according to 1 Peter 4.19. 2 Timothy 2.13 says that when God's people are unfaithful, he will remain faithful. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you feel, God's faithfulness is unchangeable. Our identity as believers isn't in the things that we've done or the things that we feel. We talk about that a lot, about how our identity is not in what we feel or what we do, but our identity is found in God. He doesn't change. We cannot affect his faithfulness. So whatever you're thinking, whatever that thing is that always pops in your head of, oh, God, he won't, he won't be faithful because of blank It's not true. He will always be faithful because God's faithfulness is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing I do, nothing I feel, nothing someone does to me will change that. His faithfulness will always be the same. 
in small group time, I hope that you can spend time talking about where you've seen his faithfulness. Um, and how, what are things in your life that you can be reminded of, of his faithfulness? And maybe you're in a season where you're going, I don't know. I have no idea how to see God's faithfulness. And hopefully your small group can come around you and pray for you. Um, my mom, a couple years ago, uh, had a seizure unexpectedly uh, in the middle of the night. The doctors couldn't figure out why. Uh, and she was in the hospital for a couple weeks. And there was a really, it was a really hard season for me to see how God would be faithful in that. But he was. She's fine. Uh, she actually got to witness to some of her nurses um, and tell them about how great Jesus is. And so there's things like that that happen that I go, I don't understand. But he is still faithful and true. Um, and so like I mentioned earlier, over the next couple of weeks, we will talk about different characteristics of God um, and figure out and see what they say about our identity. Um, because if there's one thing I want you to walk away from tonight, it is the reminder that God's faithfulness, say it with me, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to pray for us. Don't get up when I say amen, because we have some announcements, okay? Let's pray together. Lord, I come to you right now, and I stand here just in awe of what you're doing in this ministry, what you're doing in the lives of our students and our leaders. I am so grateful to get to be a part of this and what you're doing here at Bentry. Lord, I pray as we go into small groups that you will remind us um, just how you have been faithful and how you are faithful and how you will continue to be faithful. I pray that our conversations in small groups are fruitful um, and focused and that we just sit in your word and talk about how great you are. Lord, we love you and I pray all in your name. Amen. <music>